Well, good morning, church. So glad you are here joining us this morning for our church service. I'm going to open in prayer as we begin. So let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that we can sing and worship or that we can, can pray together. Lord, I ask that you would be with us in this service, that we would be drawn near to you. Lord, as we open our, our Bibles and look at your word, may you reveal what you have for us today. Make us yield our lives to, to the truth in, that is written in the word. Lord, I pray that you continue to work in our lives, help us to grow during this time, and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin today by singing, All My Ways Are Known to You. So let's sing together. Of loss and loneliness, foolish 
Lord, I, I thank you that our, our ways are known to you, that you know us, you know who we are, we know our struggles, you know what we're going through. Lord, draw us to yourself. Lord, reveal yourself to us. Help us to feel your, your love and we would be open to our understanding of you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue to worship by singing No Other Name. So let's sing together. name by who we can be saved, no other name who we should turn to in our times of sorrow, and no other name that deserves praise in the good times. 
but the name of Jesus. As we're not meeting in person, our only way of giving right now is online. So if you'd like to give your tithes and offering to support the, the ministry of the church, please do so in the link below. I might just pray for that. So let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this church that is seeking to, to share the message of Jesus with our community, as well as disciple the believers of, of those who um, are coming to the church. Lord, I pray that we would be cheerful givers, so we give and that we recognize that you are the one who meets our needs. And so we give back to you, recognizing that you are our God and King. Lord, I pray that this, these tithes and offerings would be used to further your kingdom. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we know, the lockdown has been extended for a few weeks, and we'll see how the numbers go coming up in the, the coming weeks to see what church will look like. But we will be continuing to meet online as long as that's the requirements. And I do want to encourage you to join us today after the service if you'd like to come and have a bit of prayer time, a bit of chatting, catch up on Zoom. So the link will be in the chat. And so we'd love to have you join us. Feel free to grab a cup of coffee before you come and, and then join the meeting. And we'll yeah, catch up with each other and continue to pray for each other. And speaking of prayer, Paul is going to lead us in prayer this morning. So. Uh, Let's turn it over to Paula. Good day, church. It's my turn to do the prayers this week. Um, I hope you've all had a good week. I have kids at home still in lockdown. Mitchell back at work at the mine, and I've been able to go and do a little bit of my own work. So it's not so bad for us. But now if you'd um, just like to uh, close your eyes and, um, and let's pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you to be with the people in Afghanistan at the moment. I, none of us can believe that um, what has happened, that these people can, two, two um, bombers who killed themselves, Lord, and they're, obviously their lives are worth nothing compared to the bigger picture in their eyes. And I just pray for the innocent people. I pray for the armies, the America, UK and um, New Zealand. I know they're all over there as well as Australia. Oh, what a mess it is over there, Lord. What a mess. Um, you must, your heart must be breaking for Afghanistan now, your people. And I just pray that the people can get out, that the Taliban can allow the people who want to get out to leave. And that they, they say they want peace with the world, Lord, that they want to connect with the world. And I just ask that you would allow that to happen. They've taken over. And it's a different country from the one that they had. So I just ask you, Lord, that, that they are going to allow more freedom for women and children. Lord, please just pour your spirit on those people over there, Lord, I ask. I'll pray for Africa. I've been looking this week at the um, rates of COVID vaccines around the world. And I, I've seen like Africa, literally the main poor countries in the centre. I've, I've had nothing, nothing at all. Lord, I pray, uh, I was talking to Brad about this and we were saying that well, no one really needs them vaccinated. It doesn't affect most of the countries in the world like Mexico is vaccinated because the Americans need it to be. And But Africa seems to have been forgotten, Lord, and I just ask that the countries in the Western world will be convicted to go and help over there, Lord. Lord, I pray for Australia. I pray very much for um, the continual rollout of the vaccine. I pray that we have a peaceful weekend, that people in New South Wales and Victoria don't decide to go out and um, protest this weekend. I do pray for Victoria. I know they've had a very long haul and things are not looking good there now. Oh, God, I ask for patience for those people. I really do feel for what they've been through and, you know, we've been in lockdown all together for like maybe a month here in Blaney and it's driving me mad. So I just can't imagine what it must be like for them. Please give them patience and realise that protesting is the worst thing they can do. 
I pray for the HSC students. They've um, been told that the uh, exams are going back again. This is the second time they've been pushed back now. So it's like a month later. So Tom should be finishing at the end of October and he's not even starting his exams now till the 9th of November. So I know he's pretty bummed about that, Lord. And I just pray that, that you will give them patience, Lord, and keep the momentum going so that they can um, have the, um, they can be ready to sit them when it, when it is time. Lord, I pray for, pray for Blaney. I pray for our town. Thank you that we've got no COVID cases. Thank you that people are doing the right thing. Thank you that we're rallying around and, and people are um, shopping properly, wearing their masks and, and logging in. And, and I do pray that our town is, um, continues to, to do the right thing so that we don't get any cases here in, in Blaney. I pray for our church. I thank you that Donna and David's moms, David's moms, are both improving. Thank you for that. And I pray for Kylie's dad's funeral this week, Lord. He sounds like a great man, Lord, and I hope that they do get a chance to celebrate a great life because this time on earth is so small compared to all eternity that he is now and enjoying uh, where there's no COVID and lots of freedom to celebrate and to worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for, for your love. Thank you that you never forget us, Lord, and that you are our rock and our redeemer. And I ask that we all just turn to you at this time and we all tell you how we're feeling, tell you that it's tough, that it's hard and that we're, it's hard to keep motivated. It's hard to keep having hope and looking forward that we might get out of, of uh, lockdown soon. And I just ask, Lord, that we, we're not ashamed to come to you and just pour out our feelings to you because you are way bigger than anything we can and we can imagine any whinging that we can have and you understand and you love us. You love us so much. And thank you for your constant presence in our lives with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you, Paula, for that prayer. Now we're going to, to begin the, the sermon. I've got a, a few jokes for you as we start. What does a brain do when it sees a friend across the street? It gives a brain wave. <laughs> Why do brains put candy into their pillows? So they can have sweet dreams. <laughs> what did the doctor say to the man with an elephant sitting on his head? It looks like you have a lot on your mind. <laughs> In case you can't tell from the jokes today, we, we're talking about our, our brain, but more importantly, our, our thoughts and um, our, what we might refer to as our mind. If we, we look at um, Christian books, there are actually hundreds of Christian books written about our minds and about our, our thoughts. And we realize now that our thoughts can be very powerful things. And I, I've said previously in in sermons that our, our brains and our thoughts are sometimes the last thing that we get lined up with following after Christ. There's many outward things in life that we change, the way we can, can be live a life that um, the Bible calls us to live, but our, our thoughts and our minds can be the last things, the hardest things to change because um, they're on the inside and no one else can see them. And we, we know from Matthew, the, the power of our, our thoughts and our, and our feelings is because they can be sin. As we, we, we think things um, such as anger towards somebody, the, the Bible tells us in Matthew that it's like murdering that person. So our, our thoughts and feelings are very powerful and they, they can be sin. So sin's not just things we do. But the things we, we think and, and feel can also be sin. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need to be renewed on the inside. We need to be renewed 
um, by by Christ, so that we can live and think in ways that are 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 towards Christ. And so, for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about our minds and our thoughts. Um, Philippians two five says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." We want the same mind that Christ had to be in us. We want to live a life that is following after him, the example that he set. And so our minds need to be renewed. Our minds, we want to be like Christ. And so in the message today, we're specifically going to be looking at positive and negative thoughts, the things that we have. And and in the world today, with everything going on, it's very easy to be negative, to think negative about what's going on. But the Bible calls us to be positive people, to, to think towards things the Lord, to rely on him. And, and we've talked over the last um, couple months and into last year about our need to trust in the Lord. And that is the foundation that leads us to our positive thoughts. So I ask you today. Are you a, a person where when you look at this cup, you see it as half full or half empty? Is it half full or half empty? And we use that saying sometimes to, to say, well, what is our outlook on life? How do we look at life? And I just want to be clear as we start this, you know, we are called to be realists, to, to see what's going on and not to be unaware of things. There's also things that happen in our life where we are called to, to, to mourn, to be in sadness. So being positive is not to say we, we can never feel sad or we can never deal with some of the other emotions or, or that we have to go beyond reality. But we are called to be people that are, are focused on Christ, relying on him. And so I, I ask, what are our thoughts like? Are we people who are positive? Or are we letting negative come in? And the, the problem with letting negative thoughts come into our, our minds is they, they can lead to other things. They can lead to fear. They can lead to anxiety. They can lead to being depressed. Um, and, you know, if that we become a very negative person, it can even make it to where people don't want to be around us. There is a, a saying in Latin said, cognito ergo sum, which was first said by Rene Descartes, and it's translated into English as, I think, therefore I am. How are we thinking? What are our thoughts like? Because that's going to, to, to lead us to where we are. That's who we are going to become. If our, our thoughts and minds are filled with negative thoughts, negative things, then we're going to become a, a negative person. And, and if our thoughts are filled with positive, relying on the Lord and, and filling ourselves with the right things, then that means that we, we're going to have thoughts and we're going to be positive people, people who, who are not being drawn down by those negative thoughts. And I did mention here that our negative thoughts can lead to being depressed. And I just want to be clear here at the start that nowhere, um, I don't in any way want to say that by just being positive, that if someone who is, you know, clinically depressed, that that's going to be enough to pull them out. And just want to say that if someone is dealing with deep depression, that I, I would highly encourage you to um, get the help that you need to get past it because it can't for someone who's clinically depressed it's not as easy as oh just be more positive so i want to say that at the beginning and um wanted to to say as we we go through this that there are people who who struggle to be positive and they can need some help to to get through that but for normal feelings of being a bit down from time to time as we go through the, the sermon, this should be a, a way of helping us to be positive people. So what are your thoughts like? Are you a positive person? Um, but my first point today is to, that we need to be um, people who think positive thoughts. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, 
whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We are called to be people who think on the positive things. We are to have our focus on the things that are, are true, noble, and right, pure, so that our minds go there automatically. And some Christians, um, they fail to discipline those thoughts, and our thoughts can very easily go down a, a negative path. And possibly it's something that you've learned if you grew up around people who were very negative, and it can pull you down. And in fact, in our own lives, as we think, the brain has patterns and almost like ruts. When you think of as a car driving through mud, leaving big ruts where you can see where it's been. And our brain forms these ruts with at times negative thoughts and our brains wants to go down those ruts again. So we have to retrain our discipline, our minds to, to keep us from going down that, that those pathways that have already been forged, those pathways that are, are negative thinking. And many times we've had a lot of negativity spoken over us, you know, hurts, deep hurts of someone, something that somebody said that pulled us down and, and caused us to have negative thoughts. Um, I, I remember back was, well, about 13 years ago now when I was working in, in Liverpool for the Salvation Army, I was walking down the street one day and there was a, a mom who was walking with a uh, about a five, six-year-old boy, and they got to the crosswalk, and he was, you know, jumping and pushing the button, and she just went off on him, and she, you know, was swearing at him, you're, you're such an idiot, I can't believe that you're, and swear, 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 right, right at this five, six-year-old boy, that's what she was saying to him, so the, those kind of negativity that's been spoken of us over us can can pull us down can cause us to be negative in our thoughts but we must take deliberate action to to think on positive things to replace the negativity in our minds when we're going down that negative path when our, our thoughts are going to to places that are, are pulling us down and we need to 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 seek to keep an an optimistic outlook um, 2 Corinthians 10.5 says we demolish arguments and every pretense or pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take every, take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So this idea of, of taking our thoughts captive, of, of not allowing them to, to be negative. When negative thoughts come in, then we, we find a way to think on positive things. I, I found a, a good way of doing that is having Bible verses that I, I remember from, from, uh, from when I was younger and memorizing, or even what you can do is find some Bible verses that, that might um, combat what those negative thoughts you're feeling. But Find something to replace those negative thoughts and think on the things that are, as Philippians 4, 8 said, that is true, are noble and right. We need to change what our, our thinking is. That way we can get rid of those negative thoughts, which can really pull us down. A second thing I think is we, we seek to be people who are positive, see people who are, are have our minds renewed by, by God's spirit is that we need to put positive inputs into our, our thoughts or into our minds, into our lives. Galatians 6 verse 7 and 8 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whatever sows to please their, sorry, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. What are the things you're putting into your life? What is the, the music you're listening to, the, the movies or shows you're watching? Are we putting negative things in? Or are we putting positive things in? If you take a, a stream of, of fresh water, but somewhere along you put something that's just slowly putting little things in, it begins to uh, contaminate a whole stream or whole river and that's that's what happens when we allow negative things or, or things that are are going to pull us down are going to um, hurt us in our spirit 
you know, and I, I know a lot of people justify, oh, it's, you know, it's just a little thing. I, I'm not going to let it, let it uh, affect me or I, oh, I don't listen to that all the time or we can do a lot of justification. But when it comes down to it, the things that are going in, they're, they're going in. And I, I think back to at times where I, I've worked, had jobs around people who, you know, might have a bit of rough language, you know, and I, I don't want to pick on, on language too much, but when, when they're, when I've been around a lot of swearing, I'm not one who swears, but yet when I've been around that, those are the things, those are the words that pop into my head. And I know sometimes we can't control what, you know, who we're around, if it's at work or, or places where we're, where we um, have no choice to, about being, but those things going in, there is a fruit in that and that it affected my thoughts. It affects me um, when something happens that those are the thoughts that pop into my head. So the, those negative things that are going in, they can contaminate us or influence us from being able to, to think positive. So what are the good things we need to be putting in? What are the things we need to be listening to? What are the things that we want to, to feed ourselves? You know, God's word, our, our positive things, Christian music, or our podcasts, you know, reading books that are, are building us up. Those are the things we want to put in because the things that we sow into our lives, we're going to reap benefits from that. And I want to be a positive person, a person who is, is trusted in the Lord. And I need to sow into my life and put into my life things that are going to, to see that come to fruition. Uh, the next point I would like to make is we, we can see positive in the things around us. Look at positive things going on. And Hebrews 12, 2 says, look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And we need to look towards Jesus. We need to look at him. And there are times where we look around us and we don't see a lot of positive sights. You know, we're in lockdown. We're, we're stuck at home. We're, we're separated from our loved ones, from the people who, who mean a lot to us and, and are dear to our hearts. And we it's kind of like struggle to look around us and see positive things, but we can look to the Lord. We can look to God and see what he has done for us. Look at the great love he has for us. Look that the victory has been won. And those are things as we look towards, we look to Jesus. He can, he can fill us and allow us to be positive, not because life's going great around us, but because we know who God is. We know what he has done for us. And we are grateful to Jesus. So we need to see the positive sights, looking to Jesus for that. We need to speak positive words. I don't know about you, but there are people around where I leave being with them feeling very drained, feeling very down, just because everything that comes out of their mouth is a complaint or, or something negative. But in, vice versa, there are, are are people I'm around who, when I'm with them, I leave them feeling uplifted and positive, and, and I, I feel encouraged by the things that they say. I'm going to embarrass two people in the church by, by talking about them, and, and, and look, there are many positive people in our church, but I just wanted to highlight two people in particular, um, Deidre and Sheila. I'm just so grateful to to visit with you guys, because every time I'm with you, I just feel uplifted. I, I feel positive because the things you're saying are encouraging. The things you're speaking are, are, are positive words. Um, and I, I leave you guys' company feeling blessed and lift, lifted up. And again, there are many other people in the church who I feel that same way about, but I want to, to just highlight there are people that are like that. They're speaking those positive words, speaking words of life. And then there are other people um, who can bring us down, bring people down because of the, the, the words that they're singing, they're saying, those negative words. And so when we speak positive words, that, that brings us thinking about positive things. It, it lifts those around us. Whereas when we're constantly talking about negative things and, and 
you know, sometimes I feel like I talk about COVID too much, you know, Beck and I talking about it, you know, what's the first thing you do when you talk to somebody? Oh, how, how are you going? And there's so many things that we can talk about. So what can I look towards? What, how can I be more positive with the things I say? Otherwise, we begin to let the things we're talking about drag us down. Psalm 105 verse 2 says, to sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. There's so much that the Lord has done for me, so much he's done for us. There's wonderful things that we can be talking about, and we can be encouraging and lifting people up, sharing what God's telling us, what he's done for us, how he's been with us. Let's speak about those positive things, and it lifts us up as well as it lifts others up around us. The, the, the final thing we can do to be positive people is to perform positive deeds, our actions, doing the things that we have in life in a positive way. Colossians 3, 23, whatsoever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. If the things that we're doing are positive, if we're trying to serve others we're trying to to help others and and do it in a, a way with the right attitude of of wanting to to um, lift others up that's going to affect not just our actions but it'll affect our minds and our thoughts and i don't know about you that when i have helped somebody when i've encouraged somebody i go away feeling uplifted as well not in a oh i'm awesome look at what i've done but it, it lifts me up it, it it enables me to to be a more positive person when i do that whereas when i've done negative things or, or where when i've been you know maybe sin got caught up in anger or gotten upset or, or said something harshly uh, those are the type of things that it, it can pull me down. It can make me feel negative. And so what are the things that I'm doing in my life? Am I doing things and behaving in a way that's going to, one, honor God as if I'm working for him, but also a positive, living a positive life in the things that I do. There's a, a pastor in America who lived from you know, the late 1800s all the way to almost 2000, um, Norman Vincent Peale. And he said, change your thoughts and you change your world. Change your thoughts and you change your world. Our thoughts can influence and impact the way we're experiencing life. If we have a very negative outlook, if we're constantly being, being negative, then that's gonna be our world. Our world's gonna be bleak. Our world's gonna be hard and lonely at times. Whereas if we change our thoughts to where we are being positive and looking towards the Lord and thinking about things of him and encouraging other people, building each other's up and, and looking at the positive things that we have, the, the things we have to be grateful for, you know, we, we've talked about gratefulness in the past and how gratefulness is such a wonderful way of, of seeing the things we have in life that are positive. And those things can help build us up. So if we can change our thoughts, we can change the world, change our world, that we, the way that we live life. I'm going to, again, finish with the verse I started with, Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're struggling with negativity, particularly in what's going on in the world today, we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And who does that? God does that. Christ does that. He renews our mind through his spirit. Let's pray that our minds would be renewed, that we'd be positively looking at him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We, we're thankful for, for how you can renew our minds. You can make us be positive. You can refresh us. Lord, we live at a time where there are so many negative things going on. We watch the news, and mostly what we see in the news are the, the bad things going on. 
Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to be positive people, people who are looking towards you, people whose thoughts are captive. We capture our thoughts, that we think on the things that are true and honorable. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, be with us now. Lord, help us to be positive, encouraging people who are living in service to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God is truly a great God, and he is able to renew us, to refresh us, to make us uh, our minds and our thoughts be on him. So we're going to continue to worship by singing How Great Thou Art, singing to our great God. So let's sing together. I'm so glad you joined us this morning for church. Please remember that we're about to have a, a Zoom chat and prayer time. We'd love for you to join us and be a part of that so we can encourage and be there for each other, as well as to, to pray for each other and pray for the world we live in with so many big things happening this week, uh, happened so many things that we need God's hand on. So we'll, please join us for prayer, but have a wonderful week. Let's be positive about life. Let's be positively thinking of the things of the Lord so that we can live a life that is 
pointing others to him, a life that has enjoyed recognizing God as our Savior. Let's go out this week and live like that. Have a great week. Goodbye.